this video, we would like to show you an example of our 3D modeling workflow in Reality Capture by traveling to a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Sri Lanka called Polonarua. This project includes about 4,500 images taken by a DJI Phantom 4 Pro drone and a Nikon DSLR camera. It also includes 82 ZNF laser scans. Our color laser scans are registered in the field with the help of a tablet connected to the scanner via a Wi-Fi link. We know right away if we have missed any crucial scans and if we need to go back and do more work in a particular area. The final registration, filtering, georeferencing and coloring of scans is done on a PC back in our office. In the latest version of RC, we have a new option for importing laser scans. We no longer need to export PTX or E57 scans from laser control. We can now import a ZNF laser control project straight into Reality Capture. And we have the same import options as before, and we can choose where Reality Capture stores the generated LSP files. Once imported, the scans need to be locked for future alignments. We don't want to change the laser scan registration during the Reality Capture alignment process. The color laser scans form the backbone of our projects and we align our aerial and terrestrial photos to these color registered laser scans. Keeping the scans locked is, an, is important in order to maintain the integrity and scale of the Reality Capture project. Before we start adding images to the project, we lock the pose of all of our laser scans so they don't change position during future alignments. We're now going to add our drone photos to the project. We choose our alignment settings depending on how we want to do the alignment and we run align. I normally choose a downscale factor of 1 and a reprojection error of 3 to start off with. And there you can see the positions of the drone photos. Now I will add the DSLR photos to the project and I'm going to group the inputs by EXIF because the drone and the DSLR have different lenses and sensors. You can also set Reality Capture to group the images by EXIF automatically when you import them. And then align. And that looks like a pretty successful alignment. There are a couple of pictures that weren't included in the main component. But these can be investigated and these components can be merged in a number of ways later on. The inspection tool is extremely useful in the field or in the office. The tool is a good way of visualizing where the good and the weak points are in a scene. We can see which cameras have mutual connections and which ones are good and which ones are bad. You can analyze a subset of images by just selecting the images that you are interested in. There's also an option to analyze the scene structure uncertainty, and this shows you the precision of the tie points location. So now I'm going to inspect the component to see if there's any misalignment between images. I'm going to do this by creating a clipping box which slices through the structure I can then look at the structure from the top and see if there are any misalignments. So there I can identify one. So there are a number of ways of sorting this out. If I use the point lasso tool, I can highlight the points in that area. And then if I click on the find images button, this will identify the cameras that are responsible for the misalignment. There are a number of ways you can deal with misalignments. Firstly, you could use control points to correct the positions of these cameras, or you could disable the cameras that are causing the misalignment, or you could export them as a separate component and fix them in a new project and then re-import them back into your main project. So there are a number of ways that you can solve this problem. Once I'm happy with the final alignment, I will run a test 
meshing process on a small part of the model and I will also try and texture this mesh to make sure everything's okay before processing the entire model. This just saves time in the future if there are any errors. Here are some screenshots of the final textured model. The model is made up of about 40 million triangles and you can view the model online on Sketchfab's massive model platform.